Uh, thank you, Ron. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. I am honored to participate in this morning's Aches and Issues, and I want to thank the Greater Portland Chamber for the opportunity to speak with you today. I also want to thank the Chamber for their ongoing support. They've been terrific uh, in the year that I've been here. Uh, as Ron said, I've been on the job as Maine State President for a little more than a year, and I assure you it's been an action-packed year. Uh, in this role, I'm responsible for regulatory matters, governmental relations, and economic development for the company in Maine. Spent more than 40 years in, uh, working in the telecom industry throughout the Northeast. Um, I've been fortunate. I've been able to see the industry from a variety of views, uh, from a utility pole uh, to the Public Utilities Commission to the halls of the State House. And this time of year, I assure you, the view from the utility pole is a little more pleasing. Um, <clears throat> this morning, I want to spend some time highlighting the significant progress that we've made in a number of areas over the last year. Um, I'll cover uh, the background of Fairpoint and our impact in Maine, take a brief look back, uh, and it was rocky, uh, the role Fairpoint plays in supporting economic development in the state, our broadband commitments, accomplishments, including some very good news stories that we're very proud of. And then I'll take some of your questions, or I hope I'll take some of your questions. Fairpoint was founded in 1991, has revenues of more than a billion dollars, has more than 4,000 employees in operating in 18 states. Obviously, Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont are our largest properties. Now, my piece, well, let me talk about Fairpoint in Maine and give you some key facts and figures about our impacts on the state. We recognize the importance of our role as an employer in the state. Here are some of, these are all Maine numbers. We employ more than 1,500 employees who live in 273 communities across Maine. And we have more than 800 employees just in the greater Portland area. Uh, Portland is our regional headquarters for our northern New England operations. We pay more than $118 million in annual compensation, more than 18.5 in uh, annually in employee health care costs, and we maintain 186 buildings throughout the state. Just kind of memorize each of those locations because I want to mention those buildings later on. Uh, those buildings are a, are a combination. Ma the majority of them are our central offices or our switching offices, and some of the other buildings are where our technicians are garaged, you know, where we keep the poles and cables and trucks. One building that you probably have seen in Portland here is the building over on 45 Forest Avenue with the scaffolding that's been around it for about a year. We're in the process of renovating that central office building. That's one of our switching centers. Um, it's in the Portland's historic dis district, and it's undergoing a $2.8 million renovation. That includes, believe it or not, 50,000 square feet of roof. Um, all 250 windows are being replaced and the facade's being repaired. And hopefully uh, late this summer that will be completed and restore that building back to the way it was 50 or 60 years ago. We also operate a, a fleet of 550 vehicles in the state. You only see one at a time, but there's 550 running around the state. We made over $343,000 in charitable and civic contributions. And we spent more than $129 million on local products and services in 2010. We have a very significant footprint as an employer in Maine and northern New England, and we take that role very seriously. As you're aware, the northern New England operations of Verizon's wireline business in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont were sold to Fairpoint Communications in 2008. In early 2009, Fairpoint transitioned to all new systems in northern New England. We believe never in telecommunications history has such a complex and comprehensive systems transition been undertaken. It was no small task. We, we moved all of the data, all of the operating systems from over 600 Verizon systems, some of them old, some of them very, very old, um, into 60 brand new Fairpoint systems. We recognize there were a number of post cutover transitions. You saw it all in the news media. And we did inconvenience a, a, a lot of our customers. It didn't go the way that Fairpoint had hoped it would go. Our employees have been working to improve both customer experience and our systems. They've worked long and hard, and they deserve kudos for their efforts. To make the enhancements to improve system performance has definitely helped us better serve our customers. 
As a result, I'm pleased to report that our operating systems are stable and operational, and we're focused on continuing to improve customer service moving forward. As Ron mentioned, we filed for Chapter 11 in October of 2009 and successfully completed our debt restructuring process emerging January of this year. Uh, customers were virtually unaffected by the process, we've, uh, and we've emerged as a stronger company focused on meeting our commitments and serving the customers. Fairpoint is now better positioned for the future. As a result of the Chapter 11 process, uh, we reduced our debt by 64%. Our stock is once again being traded on the NASDAQ, and we have a new board of directors, um, a new CEO that I just uh, had in the state last week, as a matter of fact. Um, <clears throat> the systems transition that I mentioned, the rocky parts of that, and the Chapter 11 process did definitely damage the reputation of the company. Um, as you all know, there's no easy, quick way to rebuild a reputation. It takes time, and it's a step-by-step -step process. Uh, Henry Ford, I believe, said you don't build a reputation on what you're going to do. Uh, he's right, in my opinion. It's really quite basic. It's all about serving our customers and fulfilling the promises that Fairpoint made with the merger acquisition. It's the only way to build our solid reputation. I want to outline a few activities that we feel have been important uh, to rebuilding this reputation. I believe that every Fairpoint employee plays a vital role in helping restore this reputation. They're on the front line. They serve as Fairpoint's ambassadors. I continue to be impressed by the commitment and the efforts of our over 1,500 employees in Maine. They're working every day to, uh, to exceed the expectations of our customers. We have a very talented and dedicated group of employees who are the key to the success of our company. We encourage our employees to get actively involved in their communities. One way we do this is through our volunteer incentive program that recognizes employees' voluntary contribution of time and talent to no local nonprofit organizations where they live and work. We also believe in supporting local companies, and as I said before, whenever we can, we buy local. As I mentioned, we spent <clears throat> more than $129 million on local products and services in Maine last year. We purchased all our vehicles from dealers in the three northern New England states, including a dealership here in Portland. We spent $15 million in 2008 and another $6 million in 2010 on vehicles. Um, we use a company in Lewiston for our lockbox provider. That, that, that's a service that gets payments to the bank and makes the process more efficient. Uh, we have a local printer in Portland that prints and mails our bills to all of our customers in northern New England. We've also been getting out into the community to meet with the local chambers, uh, business association, and community leaders. These face-to-face -face meetings are an extremely effective way to understand what their needs are and how Fairpoint can help. We also feel it's important to work as a partner with state, local, and regional organizations interested in supporting economic growth. Our goal is to work to support and enhance meaningful, sustainable economic growth. I'll talk a little bit more about economic development in a, in a minute. Um, we're a company that's local. We get actively involved in the communities where we live and work. I want to talk about the commitments that Fairpoint made before the 2008 transaction and provide you with some great news on that front. <clears throat> Excuse me. When Fairpoint took over operations in northern New England, we committed to several things. There was a whole list of things that we committed to, but these are some of the key ones. Support local and regional economic development activities, upgrade the network in northern New England, and increase our broadband availability. One of the important responsibilities I have as a Maine State President is helping support economic development in the state. We believe that if we can help enhance economic growth in Maine, it's good for everyone. It's like the incoming tide. It raises everyone up. We want to be a partner in supporting economic development in Maine. A robust network, increased broadband availability, and economic development all go hand in hand. We hope those actively involved in economic development will look to us as a resource. The word partner is the operative word here. <clears throat> We're committed to taking a leading role in one area, to use technology to expand and sustain local regional economies. 
We want to help existing companies grow and also provide the technology that will attract new business to Maine. Here are some examples of what we've done in supporting economic development. First, we retained one of the leading economic development consulting firms in the country and have made them available to assist local and regional economic development organizations. Second, we funded the development of a first-of-its-kind economic development modeling tool. The modeling tool helps local officials, using a set of assumptions, to determine which industry sector would contribute the greatest impact to their area. We've received very positive feedback from the officials who have used this tool. <clears throat> we also take an active role in a new initiative, Mobilize Maine. It's a collaborative, grassroots approach to community and economic development. It tries to build on the existing strengths and assets of a region. It's a fresh new approach, and it's being used in a number of regions around the state. In fact, I'm pleased to see the Greater Portland Council of Governments is starting the process of launching this effort in, in this region and has a kickoff meeting scheduled for this Thursday. And I urge all of you businesses to participate in that. Uh, it, it needs to be a partnership of the private and public sector to make economic development work in this state. Uh, any discussion about economic development leads very nicely into our commitment to upgrade the, the network in northern New England. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> We're pleased to report that we've completed the upgrade and Fairpoint's investment resulted in a new network backbone infrastructure we call Vantage Point. Uh, it's a fiber optic core IP-based network designed to carry large amounts of data very quickly and efficiently. The upgrade to the network means we can deliver critical bandwidth, data, and carrier ethernet services, thereby putting Maine in a position to compete in our technology-dependent world. <clears throat> the Vantage Point network, it's a, it's, the ethernet is a preferred choice for business, uh, the business communications. As the largest network of its kind in the three-state region, Vantage Point gives business customers one source to meet their technology needs. The network is designed to carry large amounts of data. The network offers both statewide and interstate network solutions to help streamline operations between our states. Vantage Point has already reaped benefits for the company and for the customers. Last year, Fairpoint was awarded a five-year contract worth in excess of $25 million to support the needs of the main school and library. <clears throat> I'm sorry, main school and library network. This MSLN is a consortium of a thousand schools and libraries through which participants acquire internet access and other services. The Vantage Point Backbone Network <clears throat> serves as that backbone for the school and library network and provides the added bandwidth and ethernet based services that they need. Um, just a quick aside, we heard from one of the technical directors at, at Freeport School just up the road here. Um, you know, as we expanded the laptop program in the state, they just slowed right down to the point where the teachers didn't even use the laptops in the classroom. It was so frustrating. Now, as part of this MSLN and having that big increase in bandwidth, uh, hit their, that whole school is delighted with us. And I think that can be repeated across the state. The third commitment we made was broadband expansion. First, we had to get the, the backbone network built or rebuilt. Um, next came the broadband expansion. In February, we announced that we had fulfilled another of our promises at Fairpoint successfully met, successfully met and exceeded, providing broadband availability to 83% of our main footprint by the end of last year. That was a regulatory commitment. Since 2010, Fairpoint employees worked diligently to turn up more than 260 brand new locations around the state, and that was in, it touched all 16 counties, this new addition, and expanded broadband availability to an additional 44,000 homes and businesses in Maine. Now if you can, back to the map you memorized with all those little green dots on it, all of those locations, no matter where they are from here to the county, um, all of those green dots are our central offices, they are all DSL capable and then we expand from, from that point out. We have invested more than $152 million in infrastructure to bring broadband to northern New England since 2008. 
We've built more than 1,500 miles of new fiber optic cable across the region to bring broadband access to areas that were not previously served. This aggressive and unprecedented push for high-speed internet was financed solely by Fairpoint and helped increase broadband availability from approximately 68% of the for old Verizon footprint uh, when we acquired the properties to over 83% now. Fairpoint's investment is essential to meeting the future demand for high-speed bandwidth and to provide businesses with the tools they need to compete. Providing our customers access to broadband is a key element of Fairpoint's growth strategy. With that in mind, we announced an exciting investment in our Vantage Point network that will support more high-speed wireless services <clears throat> and extend fiber into more communities across Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. This project is called the Fiber to the Towers Project, and it will supply critical infrastructure, or in the industry jargon, backhaul, um, to meet the exploding demands of the, of the wireless industry. Um, today, we support service on more than 1,600 cellular wireless towers uh, in northern New England. Um, this project will allow the wireless carriers to grow the bandwidth that they need and, and mi migrate from the 3G network to a 4G network. Tremendous opportunity to Fairpoint, an investment that will uh, continue to bring revenue for years to come. I uh, sometimes get the question, why does Fairpoint's network matter? Um, this slide, uh, I, I, it's very difficult to explain the wireless relationship to the landline relationship, and I hope this tries to illustrate that. When the cell phone in your hand goes to the tower, um, but then it relies on a landline or backhaul network. I mean, there's huge amounts of data. Um, so the wireless providers need fiber optic cables to all these towers to be able to expand their bandwidth. We're going to use this vantage point network. This is a backbone to all of our communications infrastructure in the state. Uh, and I, please don't think that this is our network. This is only the backbone. We have thousands of miles of cable around the three states. Uh, you know, it's a combination of fiber optic cable and copper cable. This is the vantage point backbone. If you're a large business or a wireless tower um, that's located somewhere in the state, it's just a piece of fiber optic cable to tie you into this network to get you where you need to go. And it's expandable. Um, everyone knows the demands for bandwidth is just, it's just, we, it's difficult to keep up with it. That network right there that we've built over the last three years is, is the future of our company. <clears throat> and I hope that explains it. It's a, it's a rather difficult uh, picture. Um, we believe we've delivered on the promises we made and continue to focus our efforts to help the region grow and prosper. It's clear to all of us at Fairpoint that we must now be focused on the future, not the past, and it's not going to be easy. Fairpoint operates in a highly competitive environment, and customers have many choices for their communications need. The industry is rapidly changing, is extremely competitive as local telephone companies, us long distance providers, wireless and cable companies all vie for the same customers. Unfortunately, the regulatory structure in the telecommunications sector has not kept up with current technology, innovation, and the highly competitive marketplace. Long gone are the days when only one communications provider existed and the monopoly regulation was deemed necessary. I remember those days, they were really nice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, current, current regulation, uh, I could tell, you, tell your mom, you know, I'll get there when you know, I get there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, current regulation of the traditional wildline companies remains largely based on the old monopoly model. A regulatory parity bill now before the legislature is t intended to start working towards reforming regulation to reflect today's realities and put all companies on equal footing. Yesterday, I'm pleased to report, uh, and we only did this yesterday so I could report today. Um, yesterday, I'm pleased to report that the Utilities, Energy, and Technology Committee voted the bill out of committee with a unanimous vote. And I, I had to steal this phrase from the committee uh, sponsor of the bill. The bill sponsor, Representative Stacy Fitz, said, I really believe this is a landmark bill and will be a revolutionary change for the telecommunications industry in the state. 
Uh, we look forward to working with the governor, the Maine Public Utilities Commission, and the legislature to develop an environment that encourages ongoing private investment in the state's communications infrastructure and recognizes that a competitive market leads to a stronger economy and greater opportunities for Maine people. I am honored to serve as state president for Fairpoint. I'm proud of the things we've achieved and excited about the future. We're in a very good place now and well positioned to meet the challenges ahead. And I appreciate the opportunity to address you this morning. Thank you very much.